winter is here. I know what I must do. What was that? Must just be the wind. Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome back to another Skyrim Meads and Meals. If you guys have missed out on the last couple, I'll drop a link. You can check out the playlist, catch up on any that you haven't seen if you want to do that. Got some good comments in uh, the second episode, I think it was. Some uh, good tips on how to work with uh, making mead and carboys, which is not something I've done a lot of. I generally use my big six gallon fermenter. If you've seen my other videos, it's got a big wide mouth, so I have no problem pouring things into it. And then when I rack it into carboys, I'm using the uh, rack and cane. So yeah, I definitely appreciate that. But today what I wanna do is kinda show you guys a uh, little different process on how I usually do it. But I'm still gonna be doing it small, you know, with the two gallon Mr. Beer Fermenter. Yeah, I appreciate those comments. So if you guys would like to drop some tips, some hints, things that you do when you're making mead, definitely much appreciated. Drop them comments down below. I tend to make sure I read all the comments and reply to uh, most of them. But you know something, all these Skyrim meals and meads and stuff, it's really got me wondering if v -Lod's still making that mead with juniper berries. Did somebody ask if old v -Lod's still making that mead with juniper berries? Well, I'll give you the answer, yes, and I'll show you how it's done. By the way, I just want to let you know, I do sanitize my stuff. Uh, I make the sanitizer in my second Mr. Beer Fermenter. There's the one that the mead's going in. There's the one that I'm sanitizing. Uh, I keep all my stuff floating on in there. Uh, fill up stuff that doesn't fit with sanitizer, let it soak. But yes, I do I do, do the sanitizing. First thing first here, we're gonna go ahead and get uh, four cups of water boiling. That's two. Not necessarily even boiling, just uh, warm enough to kind of dissolve some honey. And there's four. Make sure to use a big enough pot so that way I can fit the honey in there too. Okay, we've got the water nice and hot. I'm going to shut it down and uh, let that kind of cool for a little bit. We'll move it off the heat so that way it can cool a little quicker. And then we'll start mixing the honey in. Well, that's kind of chilling for a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and just pour the rest of the water into here just to like, you know, top off that half, get half gallon. So that way when I pour the hot water in, it won't be like too hot for the, the plastic here. Get that little bit of a buffer. That looks to be about half a gallon. Now back over here to the hot water. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the honey in slowly and kind of mix it into the hot water to get it uh, nice and dissolved. Now, while I let that chill even a little bit longer, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some of these ingredients to this water into this uh, fermenter. I've got some hibiscus flowers, dried hibiscus flowers. We've got some dried yarrow, and we've got some junipers. It wouldn't be that mead with juniper berries without the juniper berries. I'm curious about this hibiscus, like what it smells like, what it tastes like, because I think people make uh, tea out of it. Once again, it just smells like dried raisins. Why does everything smell like dried raisins to me? Well, I mean just regular raisins because that's what it is. It's uh, dried grapes. I don't know. It just smells like raisins. So we're going to take one tablespoon of that, kind of a little bit of a big tablespoon. I think that'll be good. want to have a good amount of it. Get that flavor in there real nice. Honestly, what else am I going to use this for? Maybe some tea. I'm going to do another little bit of a, like a half tablespoon. Because why not? Then you've got your dried yarrow. I don't know if I'm saying that right, probably not. Yarrow, yarrow, either way. It's also another like tea ingredient. It's just like a dried herb. But this one you're gonna do two teaspoons. It's a little bit more um, like powdery, you can see. But these are both kind of like uh, tea ingredients. So I wonder if you make like a yarrow hibiscus tea, how that would be. Might be kind of nice. But there is two teaspoons. That's interesting, that kind of smells like tea, like more of what 
I would uh, picture tea to smell like. More my idea of what tea smells like, I guess. Honestly, that hibiscus and that yarrow might be kind of good as a tea mixed together. I'm just gonna try and swirl that in there a little bit, get that kind of mixed in. See, I wonder if maybe it would have been a good idea to add this into the hot water too. Make like a tea out of this stuff and put it in there like that. Because I mean, it's, it's going in cold water, it's still gonna kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Disperse in there, I guess? Maybe uh, diffuse, like a tea? But I think hot water might have done better for that. Now for the most important one, the juniper berry. I have actually used this in mead before. I really like it as a mead ingredient. It's got that real piney kind of uh, flavor, kind of scent to it. Yeah. Oh yeah, very piney. That's going to be two tablespoons of that. It's kind of like the main ingredient, you know? You know what I'm saying? But you want to crush it to kind of... And this is what I did when I made my first juniper berry mead, is I crushed it like this to get those flavors kind of going, kind of activated. By the way, if you don't have like a mortar and pestle, it's a good way of crushing things. Take the bottom of a cup, put it in a bowl, use it as a masher. Really smelling that, that piney smell now. This is your, your bargain brand mortar and pestle, a cup in a bowl. The, once you crush them, they're really sticky, like um, piney kind of things too, you know, like the pine sap. It really has that like stickiness to it. You can see how it kind of is clumping together. You've got like, I don't know, maybe it is kind of like a pine sap. It's interesting though. Well, there's that crushed up. We're going to throw that in here. Give it a bit of another swirl. That smells, uh, it smells good. It smells very piney. Now for the most important part, the honey water. Bam. Gonna put the lid on and give that a good swirl. I'm really, now that I put that um, sort of warm water in there, I'm really getting more of the smells, more of the juniper and stuff. I think it really is gonna sort of teaify it, bring out those those flavors. Yeah, it smells interesting. Last but not least, the Lavalin D47. Gonna put a half a pack of that in there. And we'll seal it on up and put it away for fermentation for two weeks. That ought to do it. Maybe just a little splash more. Yep, that looks about, that looks about good. The other half of that pack will go into my next meat. I'm gonna close it up, give it a little bit of a swirl once again. Let's try and get that, that yeast kind of mixed in there now. It's still a little bit warm, which is good. Yeast likes to be activated in kind of a warm, a warm water. You gotta be careful with these Mr. Beer fermenters because they have like a built-in airlock system to the top here. And so um, you'll get some leakage if you kind of mix it too much, which I definitely did <laughs> and always do. Let's take a look at that. Look at that mixture. It smells really nice. It's really got an interesting smell to it. I'm kind of kind of looking forward to this one. I'm really curious how it's gonna come out. All right, so lid on, and that's gonna go away for two weeks. Now it's back to Sovereign Guard with me. I'll tell you what, that vlog guy sure knows how to make some meat. I can't wait to try this in two weeks. Anyways, thank you guys for watching another episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you drop the like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on those notifications because you're not going to want to miss out on any future videos. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this meat, if you've tried it. Uh, any tips, any hints, things like that. Always appreciate it. Anyways, thank you guys again for watching and I hope I'll see you in the next one.